For my video, we are going to learn how to plant a planter. This is one that I did earlier. There are th sort of three big concepts with um, making a planter. You want sort of a signature centerpiece. This is called the thriller. You want filling plants like here. Those are called fillers. And then you want the draping plants that go over the edge. Those are called spillers. So depending on the size of the pot that you have, that will determine how many plants you're going to put in. These are 20 inch pots. You want to have probably eight different plants in there at least. Um, the smaller the pot, smaller the number of plants. Okay, so I'm going to use a 20 inch pot. Um, another option for a lot of people is they take a hanging basket and take it out of the hanging basket and voila, instant planter. We're not going to do that today, but that's another option that works really well for people. I'm going to have to drill holes in the bottom of the planter so that the water will um, pour out. And then the other thing that I learned um, is this is a really deep planter, so you're going to be using a ton of soil if you don't somehow fill the bottom. I'm going to drill the holes in the bottom of the planter. To fill it, you can take plastic bottles. Great way to recycle. You just dump them in. Okay, so I've um, we've got the bottles in the bottom of the planter, and then you have a really good quality um, potting soil. Some people use compost and peat moss and mix them together. Um, this is one that's already pre-mixed. Some of them have fertilizer in them as well which is great for your plants. I use a liquid fertilizer because I've got so many different pots, it's easier for me to just walk around um, and water them. But you take your dirt and you fill the planter, not to the top because you're gonna be laying the plants in. You want it high enough that they're actually gonna be above the edge. Okay, so there's your soil. All right, now, Take your different plants. This, um, I'm using actually a meadow sage. Uh, this one's a perennial, so I'm going to use it um, in my garden after the summer. But for right now, I really love it. Um, and it's not an annual, so it's not going to die. It'll come back next year. If the roots are all bound, you just sort of rip them. You don't tear them completely off, but you rip them so they're actually going to start growing. And what I like to do is sort of set the plants out first so that I can see what they look like and then I'm going to actually dig them into the ground. So there's my thriller. These guys are my fillers here and I also have some really pretty green and white petunias that I like. These guys are marguerite daisies. They're an annual. And I'm not sure what combination I'm going to use. I like to have a variety of colors. So I've got a purple, I've got the white, I've got green, and I think I'm probably just going to alternate them around. You can use any kind of um, greens or um, Cascading petunias work really well, kind of like that one. Okay, now I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my tall plants in the center so that they grow up, and then the other stuff's cascading down. And I'm just going to sort of work around and see if I have a pattern. So I've got my purple, my green, my white, my purple, my green, my white, my purple, my green, my white. Okay, so those all look great. And then if I need it, I've got alyssum, which actually smells really nice. Um, and I may tuck that in here and there if I have some empty spaces. When you do a planter, you can have, or a container, you can have one that's full so that right away it looks amazing. Or like these over here, these are going to mature over two to three weeks and they're going to fill in. So they've got more space. It's actually healthier for the plant because they have more space for their roots to grow and they get stronger. But if you have like some event for a weekend um, or people coming over or whatever, and you want to have this splashy statement with a planter, stuff it full of plants. 
um, but know that it probably isn't going to last as long as something that actually grows um, over time. Okay, now comes the fun part and we're actually going to plant them in the planter. I have my gardening gloves so you don't get dirt under your fingernails and I have my trowel. And what I do is I start from the center and work my way out. So I'm going to take these three marguerite daisies you just sort of squeeze the bottom of the pot so that it becomes loose and pull it out. You can see these have healthy white roots. If they're kind of yellow or um, brown, that's root, mot, um, root rot, and that means that they've been watered too much. So these are nice and healthy. Okay, so I'm gonna dig um, down into the potting soil that I've put in the planter, and I'm setting that one right in the center. And then these three guys are gonna go on the side. So I'm just sort of setting them in. I'm not gonna tam tamp them down until I actually get everything in place. But you take your trowel and just dig down a couple of inches and just set the plants in. Okay, and then I'm gonna work my way to these guys on the outer edges. And I don't, I don't stick the tags in. Um, I usually keep one of each variety so I know what it is I've planted. Yeah. So by keeping these, I can see if something's going wrong with it, I can take it to the plant store and say, hey, this is the plant that I've got. It's not surviving, can you help me? You wanna make sure there's a little bit of dirt on the edge of the pot because if um, for some reason the temperature drops or whatever, you want to give them a little bit of insulation. So they aren't right against the pot. And sometimes the roots have grown through like this. I just rip them off. It's not going to hurt the plant, but then you can easily get it out of the pot. And there's enough root left that it's not going to damage the plant in any way. Okay. okay, so now I've got my plants placed in the planter. Um, I'm looking around. I like the way they're spaced, but they're gaps around um, the marguerite daisies. These petunias need to grow a little bit more. And you can see the tops of the plants. I'm still gonna put more um, soil on top of them. But I'm gonna use alyssum to fill in those spaces. Um, and this is a six pack. I really like having um, little tiny plants that you can fill with because when you have spaces, you don't want a huge plant that you've gotta put in. And I just scoop a nice healthy scoop of the dirt and I sort of push my plant back and I just pour it in. Okay, so now I've got my dirt scattered around. Now I'm going to press gently down to seat the plants into the dirt. Um, I may need to add a little bit more. And, and I'm just using my fingertips to kind of gently push down on the base of the plant. To make sure that it's really seated in there well. Okay, and I sort of brush them off gently. This is looking really pretty. So this is a sun planter. The plants that I chose for this particular one because the spot I'm going to put it in enjoy, for the most part, full sun. If you have shade, when you go to your um, nursery, you're going to want to ask for annuals that are good in shade. Begonias are a terrific shade-loving plant. Um, so this is an example of a shade planter. Um, these uh, are, they almost look like a, a wild ginger, um, but they're another draping plant. This one got cut, so I'm just going to snip it off and then the plants will continue to grow healthy. You want to make sure that you deadhead your plants. So like these begonias, see how they've gotten kind of brown? That just means that the blossom has gone by. So you just snip it off. You can either use um, your fingers or you can use snips um, to cut it cleanly. I let them go, you know, a little bit because I like having the color. But once they get kind of nasty looking, like this plant, it didn't get enough water. So you can see how it's kind of wilted. Whereas these have been getting plenty of water. Sometimes it's survival of the fittest. You're gonna have plants that die. And in my case, you just rip it out and put something else in. So choose what you love. 
Um, you can drive around and look at other people's. You can ask at the plant store, you know, for colors usually. Plant stores are organized by sun and shade and by height. Um, and I, my house is red and white, so I really love using purples and greens and whites and yellows. Those tend to be sort of my go-to color. Enjoy planting your planters. Thanks.